Hey friends, Ashley Bird is back today and I want to talk about that one thing, that one component of relationships that we tend to overlook and really honestly we actually don't even realize that it applies to every relationship in our life. You know, we think about compatibility, we think about chemistry, but we don't think about this one thing. So today I want to talk about the importance of timing. Timing in any relationship matters. It's one of the top things. It's one of the top components that you can have in a relationship. Without the proper timing, the relationship will not survive. So today I want to talk about the intricacies of timing and what that means in a relationship, how you can be aware if the relationship you're in is going to last or not last, and basically all the things you need to know about what proper timing means in a real relationship. Okay, the first component of timing is what? Availability. Are you available? Okay, in any relationship when you meet somebody and you're like, wow, I mean, like, he's amazing or wow, she's got everything. That's great. But are you actually available? I mean, I, i.e., are you uh, single? Are you able to actually be in this relationship? I have many clients come into my office and they meet what they think is their soulmate. But the one catch, the one hang up is the fact that what? They're married in a relationship with children, without children, that is not available, okay? The other form of not being available is just recently divorced, okay? Or just recently widowed. All these really denote the fact that you're not available. And the reason why I stress this is that oftentimes When people are getting through a divorce, when you're just now getting the divorce and it's just now finalizing, you are not in the right place to be in a relationship, okay? You're still dealing with uh, the wounds. I mean, divorce is tough. I mean, it's almost like you have to mourn a death, a part of your life that has died. Even if you weren't like totally still in love, it's a complete life change. It's an overhaul going through court and all that stuff is very dramatic and kind of painful but also you have to basically reinvent yourself like the phoenix coming out up from the ashes and it's not the proper time to be jumping into a new relationship the same applies to somebody that just recently lost their spouse they need to mourn the actual death of their spouse and get through that and actually find their own identity and find their true identity from the mourning process overcome that get back into a good space and that's what I consider being properly available okay the second form of timing that's important is to be in the right space being in the right headspace in any relationship you got to be there mentally you got to mentally be in the right area of your life because oftentimes when we are battling issues in our life we actually take them out on whoever we're in a relationship with And that's just normal because when we have problems, when we have to overcome issues in our life, when we're going through just just the muck and yuck of it, who do we take it out on? The person that's right next to us. Many of you out there that might be watching this video that says, hey, I'm not looking for anybody. I've been married for 10 years, but I get it, Ashley, because my husband and my wife, when they come home and they're upset about their boss, what do they do? Well, they kind of take it out on me. And I, I actually... I I tell them what they're doing because I don't want to be the doormat, but at the same time, I get it because that happens to me. And so even if you're in a relationship right now and married, you understand that, but it's important to be in that right headspace because it's important to be mindful enough to understand when something's going on in your head that has nothing to do with the relationship and not putting that out there in the relationship, as well as being mindful of your own stuff that's going on and being able to rectify that stuff and not bring that in and pull the relationship through the dirt, uh, figuratively speaking. You know, the third aspect of timing that is very important is to deal with prior baggage, okay? In order to have the proper timing, you will have had to go through and unload the baggages and the Louis Vuitton trunks of the past relationships okay you can't be like showing up with these trunks and this and that and and a whole car load back there and oh i have two storage facilities full of baggage it's not going to help you unfortunately you're not even get to get to understand unfortunately you're not even going to get to understand that other person because you're too busy in your own mind dealing with the stuff that you never dealt with and that's a really important caveat 
is that when we actually do the soulful work after a divorce, after a breakup, and we realize the part that we played in the problem and maybe in the solution, we're able to really sit back and become mindful of the things that we need to work on, the stuff that we really haven't grasped right and properly, but better yet to really kind of understand, okay, the grass isn't greener. So how do I become the best person I can be and then how can I also facilitate a two-way street in this relationship? And we're showing up with a lot of baggage. It's not going to work. You know, the fourth aspect of timing is emotional EQ, okay? Being self-aware. Being self-aware is one of the most underestimated, most important things there is, I think, to be in the planet. To understand when you feel a certain way, when you're acting a certain way, and being aware of the impact of that action, the impact of your comments, the impact of your general energy around other people. When we're self-aware, we come to the table with almost full understanding of where we stand, but we also understand when I make a comment and I say something, I understand from what sound uh, and cadence I made that comment. And then I also realize if there was anything else out there that I'm dealing with from the past that's kind of, well, I don't know, clouding the reality of the current situation. Oftentimes when we're not self-aware, we don't realize when we're bringing the past back up. We don't realize when we're going back to old um, non-successful beliefs okay and when we are self-aware we realize okay I just backtracked a little bit I got a little scared I got a little scared uh, of this relationship because I've been in some some bad ones in the past and and for some reason I got into that fight-or-flight mode and I started fighting and there was nothing to fight about and when you're able to really step back and realize that kind of stuff it changes your life forever. But better yet, when you're in a relationship with somebody that isn't self-aware, you don't go down that rabbit hole, okay? Because you realize that if they're arguing with you or they're angry with you out of the blue, it has nothing to do with you. They're fighting themselves internally. And so for you to jump into that argument makes no sense. But when you do jump into that argument and get on their level, guess what? They brought you right to their level and they're going to win every time. And if you're not self-aware, you don't even realize that you put yourself in a position that you had really no right being at because the argument was never about you. And when we are self-aware, we understand we're in a relationship with somebody who is not. The fifth concept of timing that I find very interesting that has to be here is if you're in the right timing in a relationship, both individuals have worked through their anger issues. Okay. If you haven't worked through your anger issues yet, what's going to happen is you're going to bring that anger into the relationship. No matter how amazing he is or no matter how amazing she is, you're going to find fault. You're also going to start fights. You're going to be angry out of the blue about things that they don't even understand why you're angry. But you're going to find fault because you still haven't dealt with anger. Let me give you a little, little tidbit on anger. Anger is one of those things that when you don't deal with it, it comes out in everything you do. Okay, so even if you still have angers about the way that your mom raised you or the way that your parents didn't raise you or better yet, the, the reason that you had to actually raise yourself and how you feel like you had to do everything and you're still angry and resentful from that, that anger and resentment is going to come through everything you do. And the problem with anger is that it kind of doesn't know who to fight with. It just wants to fight with everybody. And when I was younger, I had a lot of anger issues. Uh, I worked through it. It took a long time. It took a lot of personal work. I had a lot of anger issues with a lot of things. And one of the things was dealing with my father. And now we're very close and we're very tight and we have a good relationship. But I had a lot of anger and resentment toward him that I had to work out. I had to be honest about. I had to let go. And I went through therapy to deal with that. Because I realized that when I was in relationships before I really worked on that, I would find fault and get angry and literally snap like that and argue with someone instantaneously about really something that wasn't even a problem that they did. It was kind of in my mind and it was reflecting that anger that I had toward my father. The sixth aspect of timing, which I find very interesting and kind of a really big deal, is dealing with your abandonment issues. Much like anger, when we feel abandoned at some point of our life, we create this defense mechanism. We see things very much differently. And if you've ever been abandoned, you begin to think that everybody in your life is going to abandon you. 
Okay, so whether your mom or your dad or whoever raised you abandoned you, um, whether you were married at one point in time and thought everything was going great, and the next thing you know, your spouse shows up at the house and says, I want a divorce, and it's an awful, horrific divorce that you didn't even expect to happen, that can make you feel abandoned. There's a lot of different abandonment issues that we can deal with in a person's life, but a lot of times that abandonment stuff happened in the beginning. Okay, And if we're not dealing with that abandonment, if we're not dealing with it, if we haven't understood it, if we haven't forgiven it, if we haven't walked through it, okay, what happens is we begin to feel that any relationship we're in, we worry that they are also going to leave us, right? And the interesting concept of abandonment is that you are worried that they're going to leave you but you're creating this thought process in your mind that they are going to leave you and so you begin to distance yourself or do things that actually end up leading up to them leaving you okay and that's what i'm saying is that abandonment is one of those things that when it's in the back of our mind and we haven't dealt with it it's always in the forefront okay and we act in our daily lives based on that you know, whether when we see somebody talking to our significant other, whether we get extremely jealous or worried that they're going to end up, you know, hanging out with them or having a relationship with them and leaving us. Uh, there's a lot of different forms of abandonment feelings and how that kind of comes out into your relationship. And a really good example that I can offer right now is, you know, I recently had a client that came in and both of his parents abandoned him. He was raised by an uncle and it was really, really tough, okay? And he never dealt with that. He never dealt with that. And the parents tried to come back in, and he kind of tried to accept all that. But every relationship he's been in, as far as with a woman, has never worked. There's always been problems. There's always been issues, what have you. And I began to get down to the bottom of it and realize that he was constantly feeling that when he got close to this person, that she would leave him. And we do crazy things when we feel like we're going to be abandoned. We do things because we got we automatically assume that everybody's thinking that. And so I'm going to push them away before they push me away. I'm going to leave them before they leave me or whatever that has to be done. And so if we haven't dealt with that abandonment issues, we're always walking on eggshells worried. Are they going to walk out on me? Are they going to leave me? Are they going to find fault with me and kick me to the curb? And so that's another form of timing that's so important that a lot of times we don't even realize, one, what timing matters and how timing matters in a relationship. But better yet, I think we don't realize that these six components are true six components of timing. So when we worked on ourselves in all these areas that were actually available, that we're in the right headspace, that we've worked with our prior baggage, that we dealt with our emotional EQ and really worked on it to be self-aware and self-understanding, okay, that's a big deal, that we've overcome and worked through our anger issues, that we've overcome and worked through our abandonment issues, we are now in the right space, in the right timing, and in the right place, and the right state of mind to be in a wonderful relationship, that's a give and take relationship filled with love and also really amazing love that's not based on a strings attached type thing. It's not based on what you do for me, I do for you. It's about unconditional love based true love relationship. When you work through these six steps of timing, the biggest thing you learn is that you make yourself happy. You realize that and when you're getting into a relationship, you realize that you're not looking for happiness with them but you've already found it. I hope this helps you. And if you know anybody that's going through relationship struggles that might want to see this or might need this video, please let them know about it. Please send them the link. Please let them know about my channel here because growing this channel is important to get the word out, to get the message out so people can be happy, so you can be happy in your life, so you can find that happiness, that peace of mind, to find that joy that you deserve. And that's why I do these videos every week because you're important to me and I care about you, your present moment, and your future. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tell your friends and family about it. And don't forget to live your true life today.